Let's make char siu, Chinese barbecue pork. And I promise you, it's going to be the juiciest and the most delicious Chinese barbecue you've ever had. Look. <laughs> Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. Of course, it starts with a beautiful piece of meat. Now, this is a part of the pork neck, and this specifically comes from the Mangalitsa breed, which is the pig with the curly hairs. And the beautiful thing about those pigs is that they have the most insane marbling inside the meat, which means we're gonna get loads and loads of flavor from this pork meat. And if you think pork meat's supposed to be white, check again. It looks like beef. And why do we love beef so much? That's right, because it had loads and loads of flavor, and so does high quality pork. Now for this Chinese recipe, you gotta cut this pork up into sticks. I'm gonna need these about one and a half fingers thick. I'm gonna put these in a container. And now let's start working on a marinade, which is going to be an interesting one. We're gonna start out easy and simple with two cloves of garlic, a thumb size of ginger, and then we're getting to the more Chinese ingredients. Now, of course, you can substitute this with a lot of things, these Chinese ingredients, but they're gonna give this dish character. So you might wanna invest a little bit of your time to go visit those little stores that have these specific ingredients that are going to make this dish just so much better. Now, this is maltose syrup. And <laughs> funny thing about this is that it's kind of not made for the colder climates, but it is super sweet and sticky, and if you put your back into it, you can probably make it work. <laughs> Look, you see where I'm getting at? The machine's gonna love this. Ah. The next ingredient is even more important for this dish. This is red bean curd. Now. I am not gonna use any food coloring for this dish to make the pork red, because that's what the pork is really well known for. I'm just gonna use the official red bean curd, and that has in itself enough food flavoring. In China, they don't add the red food coloring. They just add this red bean curd. But in the Western countries, they like to add more food coloring to make it even more red. I'm adding about four tablespoons of this. Finally, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of the red chili paste. That's gonna bring a little bit of heat, but again, redness. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some premium soy sauce, about two tablespoons. That should do the job. Add this to our pork neck. I'm gonna massage it in so that we got every steak well covered with this beautiful marinade. And that is what it's supposed to look like. This is ready to go into the fridge. I'm gonna leave it there for at least four hours. If we're going to make Chinese barbecue pork, then we might as well make those delicious steamed buns to go with it. And that's why I've got 500 grams of flour. Now, if you're not in the metric system, of course we've written it down for you in, what, what do you guys use again? I don't know, with sticks and stones, I don't know. I'm kidding, it's on the website. To that, I'm gonna add seven grams of yeast, a tablespoon of sugar, I'm gonna set it to mix, and then slowly add 150 milliliters or half a cup of water, and then 125 milliliters or half a cup of milk. There we go. I'm gonna give it a moment to mix, and then I'm going to add the salt. Seven grams of salt, and then I'm going to let the machine do its job. Now, of course, you can do it by hand if you want to, that's no problem. This is just gonna save me a little bit of time. And after kneading about 10 minutes, and when your dough starts to look good, it's time to take it off, out of the machine, cover it up with some foil, and then find a nice warm spot in your living room to keep this warm for at least 90 minutes. And we got more preparation work to do. Now, I'm making those crispy veggies that go on top of the pork roast, and I want them to be perfectly acidic and crispy at the same time, so you get a crunch, and you get some sourness to balance out the sweetness and the fattiness of the pork. Now, I'm just gonna take my chili pepper and I'm gonna slice it up. Personally, I'm gonna keep in the seeds. You can remove those if you want to. And for me, two chili peppers is always better than one, but that's a personal preference. You can use a little less, or you can use none if you want to. For instance, if you have young kids, you might wanna leave out the chili peppers. I'm gonna put that in a bowl. And then I've got these snack cucumbers, which I'm gonna slice nice and thin. And the trick is really to go thin. 
And then it's time to add some carrots. Now for the carrots, I've got these candy carrots. I'm gonna slice these thin as well. And basically the rule of thumb is make everything evenly thick or thin. That's the best way it's going to work in the recipe. Now I'm going to add rice wine vinegar. Now this is rice wine vinegar for sushi that I buy in the normal supermarket. But that also means that they already put the sugar in. So I don't have to add more sugar to this. And then I'm going to add some coriander seeds and some cloves. A couple of those. So that's about 10 coriander seeds, five cloves. I'm gonna put the lid on, give it a good mix, and then I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge until we're ready to start assembling our dish. Another bit of preparation that we can already do is make a little crumble that we're gonna use at the end when everything is finished. And I'm gonna take some peanuts. These are roasted salted peanuts. By half a cup will do. And then I'm gonna add some roasted onions, about a quarter cup of that. And to season it up, I'm gonna use some five spice powder. About half a tablespoon will do the job. I don't wanna grind this too fine, so I'm gonna use the pulse function. And that's gonna help me get it to a little bit chunky, but not all the way fine. So just one blitz. That is the consistency that I'm looking for. Crunchy, chunky, not too fine grind, but still perfect to bite into. Perfect. I'll be cooking on my kettle grill, which is going to allow me to get some charcoal flavor on that Chinese pork, and that's going to make it even better. I'm going to put some fresh charcoal in, break it to one side of the grill, put in a couple of fire starters, light them up, and I'm going to sprinkle in some wood chips into the charcoal in a way that is spread out, and every now and then we're going to get a lovely twirl of that extra wood smoke. Once we start cooking the char siu, once the charcoal's lit, the grill grate goes on and I'm gonna set it to the top position because the cool thing about this barbecue is that you can actually lower it all the way down to the charcoal, but that's gonna give me a lot of heat. And I want to smoke the pork neck first, so I'm gonna place it opposite of the charcoal on the grill grate. You see how thick that marinade got and how well it drew into the meat. Can't wait for this to be done. The smoking part. There we go. Let's close the lid. I'll be smoking at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, which is around 240 degrees Fahrenheit. And that means I got my top vent all the way open and my bottom vent is gonna be almost all the way closed. So we're just gonna have that little, little gap of air coming in. It's going to take away the smoke from the wood chips and that's why we need this fully open. We don't want that smoke to stick in the barbecue. We need to get it out. We also need some of that moisture from the steaks to go out. And that's why the top's open. In the meantime, we're gonna check on the dough and see how far along we are. And look at that, fresh dough. Risen, I'm gonna get it out of the bowl. Boom, that looks nice and fluffy. We got all those little air pockets. And if you put your finger in it and it stays, you know the dough is the way you want it to be. I'm gonna carefully spread this out. I don't wanna push all of the air out. I just need to get this dough flat enough, which is about half a finger thick. And now I'm gonna use one of these rings to get that shape. And I've been using a rather large piece because I, we have a lot of meat and I want a lot of bread. And to make sure that these are not going to stick, I'm gonna Take a brush with a little bit of peanut oil and I'll fold it over and then I can cut the paper out. I got these steam buns ready to go into the steam pan. Just gonna load these in. We're gonna let these buns steam for about 10 minutes until they've completely risen and are cooked through. I've gotten a total of seven of these buns out of the amount of dough that I made. Now, I think two of these buns will do for a grown up person. The buns look absolutely freaking amazing. It keeps on being nice and fluffy. I love this technique. I'm gonna put the last batch in, and in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to the grill. This beautiful pork neck has been smoking for about an hour and is now at a core temperature of 62 degrees Celsius. Now I want this to go up to a temperature of 65 degrees Celsius and possibly render down a little bit of that fat. Now the way that I'm going to do that is by grilling those beautiful steaks. I want a nice bit of char on them, so we got a little bit more flavor. We got smoke, we're getting a char, and we got the beautiful marinade, and it's all going to work together. Now, if you need it, of course, 
you can open the bottom vent, but I want to take it a little bit slower. Just let the charcoal slowly come up to temperature and then I can keep my eye on what's going on because you got to keep in mind in that marinade there's a lot of sugar with the maltose. So that means it's going to caramelize easy and after caramelizing comes burning. So keep your eye on it. The best thing about doing all of this from scratch is that you're going to get the best result, the best ingredients and it's like, like your mom just baked an apple pie. You can't beat that freshness. All those beautiful steamed buns, all that delicious, just fresh grilled meat. Look at that. Whoa. And you can see that the amount of redness in the meat is actually not that crazy. It's not as red as you see with some Chinese restaurants or in some recipes because we didn't use any food coloring. It looks perfect as it is. Normally I would let this pork rest for about 10 minutes or so, but with the cold temperature outside, I'm reducing that to five minutes, but still I'm gonna give it five minutes. Just to let the juices naturally flow back to its natural states. Like this is the filled bun. Still, still it's kind of, it's ugly. Still, I'm so glad I didn't throw this part of dough away. Let's slice into one of these steaks. Take a look inside. Whoa, perfect. A juicy piece of pork. Look at that. Let's give this a try. Mmm, man, that's delicious. We got a little bit of red from a smoke ring from the barbecue. Now, of course, I want to build on my bun. So I'm gonna get this nice steamed bun. Then I'm gonna take my veggies. Gotta have a little bit of everything. Some fresh cilantro on top of that. And then I'm gonna put the pork on. And of course, a little bit of crumble. Look at that. Doesn't that look freaking delicious? That looks so good. All right. Time for the taste test. A little bit of peanuts. I have a special guest today, our intern is here, Femke. You ready for this? Yes. There we go. Mm. Lekker? <laughs> yes. For me, my favorite part is like the fluffy bun with the crispy pork and how flavorful it is. And the acidity of the vegetables really pop out, make this a really nice dish that comes real well together. If you have to give it grated from one to 10. A nine, I think. That's a nine. Good. That's nine. good, right? Jim, you're looking really, really yeah, hungry. It looks so good. You want to dive in here? I'll, I'll dive in. I'm gonna grab this one. In the precious words of Cletus, heck yeah, brother. 